taking place here at the library. Uh, and many, many people here gathered here to, together today were part of the, this project and, and were very instrumental and they, I just want to quickly tell you a little bit about it. Um, the, the Department of Cultural Affairs has been uh, working on a fledgling little mural project that we've been trying to do murals around the city. And one day, um, a, a Yale student wandered into my... No other avenue. From the churches on the street, which I won't name, Bishop, so I won't get into trouble. <laughs> Pastor, I won't name them. <laughs> Hannah Gray, to the Q House, which we'll see again. But one of the special, special places is this branch library system, Stetson Branch Library. It's in the city, but this one is the best. <laughs> Uh, okay, you know, you, I didn't realize you were such relations to make pay for this. Thank you for helping pay for this, and I'm looking forward to seeing this, okay? Okay. okay. project there of maybe what was involved, but no way. Something this magnificent. On behalf of the New Haven Public Library, the director, I want to thank and accept that this public art memorial project to both signify what the letters R-E-A-D read, the very basis of a library's history and its future, to read, to know to read, to want to read, and incorporated within that the cultural strong history of the community of Dixwell and those people for whom they admire and wanted to capture in this beautiful, beautiful uh, May I tell the artist personally, he couldn't have done a better job. I just want to take a few minutes to acknowledge the many city park departments and agencies that really came together to make this happen, particularly the Office of Cultural Affairs, but also the, engine, the city engineer's office, whose uh, appointee, Bill McMullen, who worked at the library, helped to begin to build all around this mural the kind of front, the entrance, the lighting, the things that is highlighting the setting for this magnificent piece. We have transformed the front of New Haven Public Library to something worthy of Dixwell Avenue and of this community. I'm so proud. I want to thank uh, our Buildings and Grounds Department, Cesar Kineshka, for uh, the work that they have put in uh, all together for getting this celebration set up with chairs, with parties, with painting, the things that make us all very proud to be here. And I particularly want to thank the person that I'm about to introduce to come behind me. Uh, this is an individual who has come out of this community, who has come to the library after having a full career in her own right, and went back for a second career as a librarian, but never left her roots for her understanding of the importance of this community to her. And she, along with everyone else who bought into this project when it was first mentioned uh, by Lindy Lou, that this is something we needed at Dix Realm, has been born out. And I want to thank her, and I want to honor Diane Brown. Great manager and such a manager. Thank you. First, I want to thank everyone for coming out today. 
I'm a little nervous. People say I'd like to talk a lot, but I do better in small group, one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not a good public speaker, so I'm going to try my best. First to Mr. Wellborn, um, I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> He's the one that convinced me that I could be a librarian. Mr. Wellborn has been very ill over the last year, and I pray for him every day. And it's such a blessing for Mr. Wellborn to stand here today. Um, it's his first time seeing the artwork. He's been convalescing for a long time. And um, I would be remiss to say, Mr. Wellborn, it's not the first time, but I love you like a father, and um, he's been my mentor, and he means so much to me. And I just want everyone to give him a round of applause. <laughs> um, and before I talk about the individuals in the read mural, I have a few people that I'd like to thank. Um, the next person I need to thank is my mother, Lillian Brown, who's with us today. Mom, could you stand up? She doesn't mind when I tell everyone my mother is 91 years young. My mom takes no medication. She's in her right mind. She still tells us when we're right and when we're wrong. She still runs. Everything from the kitchen table. <laughs> if you're in trouble and you need some good piece of advice, you can go to her, but she's going to keep it real. So me and my sisters, my sister Sally is here. Sally, could you raise your hand? Um, my mother is my hero um, in my life, and I just wanted to say that today publicly. Hallelujah. <laughs> The following individuals I'd like to thank for assistance, giving me all types of assistance on this project, whether it was a phone call, how to get a telephone number for somebody, trying to get the history right. I was born in New Hallville, but um, at the time I was born in New Hallville, New Hallville and Dixon were basically one. So there was no separation between the tribe and the ville. When you lived in New Hallville and Dixville, you walked up and down Dixville Avenue and you hung out and everything was okay. So that's the time that I grew up in. So I say that I was also raised in Dixville neighborhood as well. The people that I would like to thank when I first got started on this project when it was brought to my attention was my sister Sally Brown, who served as my historian. When I was looking for females to put in the mural, um, she said, Tracy Claxton. So I just wanted to thank Sally for her insight on that. I'd like to thank Mr. Ed Cherry, an architect, Dr. Ann Robinson, Fitzy Clark, she's here, Ruth Henderson, Reverend John Henry Scott, Bill McMullen, the engineer who came up and designed the beautiful awnings on the front and the back of the library on his own time. That was a start with the revitalization of Stetson Branch Library. Cesar Canestri and the maintenance staff, Officer Carl Meyer and Officer Juan Manzan, they're out here working somewhere, but they're, they're, I see Officer Manzan in the back. They're here every day. They're a part of the Stetson staff. People come in the library and see them in there and say, oh, is there a problem? I said, no, they're a part of the staff. So I want you to know that that's why they're there. Um, and they are working. And to um, off, um, Lieutenant Duff. Next, I want to have a special thanks to Mae Gibson Brown. Ms. Brown, could you stand for one moment, please? Mae Gibson Brown is in the front. I'd like to thank Mae Gibson Brown. Mae Gibson Brown is the mother to Stetson staff. Stetson staff are like a family. People want to know why we operate and function and everything turns out well because we're a family and everybody has a role in Stetson. Um, and Miss May is the big mama and unlike people think that I'm the mother, I'm not the mother. Sharon Moore, Sharon outside somewhere? Sharon's inside. Sharon is the mother. Um, of the branch. Aisha, where's Aisha? Aisha is the daughter, so everybody has a role in Stetson, and everyone plays their role, and if they don't, then uh, Miss Sharon and Miss May puts them back in line. <laughs> Miss May was very instrumental with the Concerned Citizens for Stetson, and I want to thank her and the group for all of their support. I'd like to thank the Stetson Book Club. There's some Stetson Book Club members here. They've always been in support of Stetson. Um, I'd like to thank Elsie Chapman, who's on our board. Elsie is always a big supporter of Stetson Library. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank our partner school, Wexel Grant Community Schools. Mr. Muhammad still here. Mr. Muhammad, principal of Wexel Grant School. His children worked on the art project under this um, inspiration for the artists, and I want to thank him for rendering those children for us at that time. To the entire Dixon community, I thank you. Um, I already thank my staff. A little something that I put together about the artists. People have been talking all day long about the artists, but I'm going to tell you um, 
the inside story on the artist. He's very shy. Um, the artist came about, one reason the artist came about, and my heart, so I'm going to go with what my heart says. When they came to me with the project, I said, there are so many artists in this community. I need somebody that looks like me, that comes from this community, that can work on this project. Margaret Bodell went away and came back with Cato Storm. I sat and I met with Cato. He was so humble. I had no idea of what his background was. People started saying it's going to be a bunch of graffiti on the wall. And I said, no, you don't know this young man. It's not going to be any graffiti on this wall. This, this brother's a real artist. So I knew about his background from the beginning. This project, to say the least, has been a labor of love. In several days, I called Mr. Wellborn almost in tears, trying to figure out how we were going to get the project finished. But Cato told me from the beginning, and I love you, Cato, you told me from the beginning, see the project all the way to the end, and that's what he did. Sometimes he was here till midnight. Many of you out here know that you've seen him out here. When the artwork was moved next door, Cato would leave the door open. People would go in and pray with him. People would offer him food. People would tell him stories about the Dixel community. So he really felt more inspired to continue with the project. I would ride by here sometimes 10, 11 o'clock at night, once Bill McMullen put the lights up, and they'd be out here hanging out by the mural, telling stories. And next day I would come in and Kato would share with me some more stories that people told him. So this built momentum as it went along. It turned into something much greater than what I thought it would do, but it really did unite before I begin this is this is just the beginning it's not just a mural it's not just a piece of artwork on the wall this is the beginning of a collaborative effort that we want to bring arts to our children here in the principal of Wexler Grand School Mr. Muhammad with the children and you're going to see more work like this throughout the community we're going to start um, what I'm going to do is thank you here that I've seen that I've asked to come forward and say a few words, maybe a minute, just how they feel about their image or a family member image that's not get a response. Um, if you read on the back of your brochure, there's a little bio about each individual. We're doing the research. Church and the center of the art. Is the pastor of your church here? Okay, we're going to move forward. We have Perkins Funeral Home. Did I see Alexis Perkins? If Alexis can come, Alexis, can you come forward, please, and say a few words? Um, my name is Alexis Perkins, and my sister's here somewhere, Sharon Perkins. My family's had a strong tradition of commitment to the community, and I do that. I continue that in my life, and we're just very flattered to have this honor. Thank you. We have um, Barack Obama, who is. <laughs> he's not from Dixwell, but he's in our hearts, and he's one of us. So the uh, children and Cato, the artist, he began to take some lead on it and ask him permission. I said, well, Cato, if the people want Barack Obama, then we'll put Barack Obama. So that's why Barack Obama is in New York. We have um, Dr. Charles Twyman. I don't believe Mr. Twyman is here. I sent out some information. I believe he's, he lives in the Bahamas. I think my sister says he lives on one of the islands. So. Okay, would you like to come forward and say something on his behalf? Thank you. Twyman is here in uh, New Haven. Uh, he has been living in Bermuda. But I don't know whether he knew about this occasion today or not. I didn't know myself until this afternoon. But I'm sure he'd be very grateful. All right, thank you. Is um, Mr. Oliver here? Someone from the Oliver family here? Okay, they were also contact. Okay, we have Mayor Mr. Daniels here. Thank you, Diane. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. Hi, Mom. I'm, uh, I'm just simply delighted and thrilled. I used to live about one block from here on Rusty Street in the project. And uh, this is my community. This is the community that I grew up, grew up in. And it's uh, extremely a great honor to have a street not too far from here, named after me. But to have my picture on a mural here on Dixon Avenue is a tremendous, a tremendous 
honor. And, and I'm, I'm glad I'm alive to see it. <laughs> You know, uh, people who have uh, streets that are named after them, or schools that are named after them, have been long dead before that honor comes to them. So you have you have some sense of an idea of how uh, how overwhelmed I was when the uh, uh, mayor and the board of education. And then the school on Congress Avenue after you. But to have my picture here on the mural that will serve this community and this city for generations to come is a great, great honor, and I thank you. Thank you for keeping brief. He's like a lover dad, so he's listening to me. Um, we're going to move to the E. Um, upper left, we have Bowen Peters School of um, Dance. It was lastly called Bowen Peters School of Cultural Arts. Last location was at the Firehouse, which is now part of St. Matthew's Church. Down lower, the images that you see of someone dancing across the keys of the piano, the piano, those are actually painted by youth at the youth to actually have something that was actually an image. Down on the lower left of the E is Miles Davis. Miles Davis represents one of the very, very famous jazz musicians that played at the infamous Monterey Jazz Club that you see down on the lower right. And you see Mr. Greenlee with the top hat on. He was a vaudeville dancer in the 40s and the 50s. Is um, Dolores Greenlee here? Yes, Good evening, everyone. Um, I would like to give a shout out to my family, the Greenlee family who's out there. Can you raise your hands? Okay. I just want to say that we're really, really excited to, to have this happen for, um, for my dad, Rufus Edward Greenlee. We've been talking about my dad for years and about his legacy and how rich the cultural history is here in New Haven, particularly in entertainment. Uh, we've been talking about it since he was um, in vaudeville in the early 1920s and how he entertained the czar. He and his partner did a soft shoe. He traveled uh, the world, lived in Europe 15 years, spoke seven languages fluently. And then he decided to retire from in the entertainment field because he wanted to come back home and of course he's you know after after so long of dancing and performing you you get a little tired you want to retire so he came back home and he opened up the Monterey Cafe on Dixwell Avenue right down the street there All right. and in fact I was um, exactly there aren't very many people in New Haven that don't know about the Monterey or who haven't had a really good time there. But um, in any case, and I grew up the street, uh, grew up across the street from the Monterey. I used to always look out at nighttime at my uh, at the Monterey and wait for mom and dad to to get across the street and relieve the babysitter so I can uh, so I can harass them and keep them up the rest of the night. But in any case, um, my dad uh, went on to have some of the uh, uh, the biggest names in entertainment during that time at the Monterey. Um, the Monterey saw the likes of Josephine Baker, um, Ella Fitzgerald. They do private jam sessions. All the artists that were jazz artists coming from New York going to Boston would stop in New Haven and do this, do this little jam session, sometimes private, sometimes not. Um, and a, a lot of history was made in good times. Um, of course, the Monterey um, uh, fell prey to, you know, uh, um, in the early 1990s. But we are still here. We're, he's still alive. He's always going to be alive on this mural. I thank you so much for this, and my family thanks you so much for this. And we certainly will continue to sing his praises and let you know more about him and the work that he's done and the history that he has made for New Haven. He's in several books uh, that you can find in the library. Um, so you can come here and ask Diane and read more about him uh, and, and what he Thank you so much. Uh, Dixwell is, is my town too, so thank you so much. You know, I don't live in this immediate area anymore. I'm still in New Haven though. So good to see many of you that I haven't seen in a very long time. Thank you. 
Thank you.